Hey friends, Adam here. So if you're like me, you might have gotten an email from your friends at Starlink recently that said, action requested, switch to standby mode. I know I was happily enjoying myself the other day, just working on a design for a new Starlink mount that I'll have another video on shortly. And this little pop-up came up and I was like, action requested from Starlink, I should check this out. And I got this email, right? Switch to standby mode and stay connected. We've upgraded the pause feature upgrade it to include standby mode so you can stay connected five dollars per month so i get to pay for this lovely upgrade and i'll have low speed data maybe some calls texts and i can reactivate my service so you might be wondering what this is all about and if it's a good thing or a bad thing you also might wonder did pause service disappear and you might also wonder do you have to do something because it says here if i don't do something by september 13th I'm going to lose my service and it's going to be canceled, which is not a lot of fun if I'm in the middle of nowhere on a trip. So I have dug into all the details. I have gone through all the cruft on Reddit, all the arguments back and forth, read the updated Starlink FAQs on pausing service, canceling service. I went through the terms of service. I even chatted with the Starlink support bot. I think I understand what it's for, what it's not for, and the pros and the cons, and I'd love to share that with you as well as tell you what I'll be doing. So if that sounds interesting to you, stick around and let's get into it. At Bantha Overlands, we're on a mission to inspire and enable more people to get outside and experience the fulfillment of overland-based travel. Join us as we share our adventures and tips for finding awesome routes and dispersed camping, make our own DIY overland gear, and find our balance of mixing work and play as we try to spend more of our time traveling, exploring, and connecting. Now I know a lot of you have watched my other videos. I have a great video actually that I'll link below on how much bandwidth you need, which data plan you should get. I really, really wanna focus on the standby mode today. So if you haven't seen that video, check it out. Some of you also know me from my Starlink field guide, which is over 60 pages sharing my experience and a lot of details and recommendations on using Starlink when you're traveling. If you haven't seen that or you want to download the newer version that I just updated for standby mode, you can go to shop.banthaoverland.com. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see a download link for the Starlink field guide. So check that out. So the older version of the field guide, which I just updated today, uh, had a section about pausing service. This is something I think we really loved, especially for those of us that don't travel full time, maybe in the winter or maybe for a couple months, we'd pause service when we didn't need it. We could turn it off, save some money, and then turn it back on when we needed it, right? So really helpful feature. So pausing service, it's gone, right? We now have standby mode and we now have cancellation. And I want to dig into all those details to help you understand the change and pick which option is best for you. So just as a level set, if we go to the Starlink website and go to starlink.com slash roam, we see the two roam plans, right? We see the 50 gig plan. We see the unlimited plan. That other video I was talking about before gets into all the details about how much bandwidth I actually use and which of these plans I think makes the most sense. But the thing is, after you activate your service, you actually have an option to choose from a variety of other plans, not just those two. So I'm in the updated version of the Starlink field guide here. And this is a comparison of all the plans. And I just want to quickly go through it to level set, but also show you where the new plans, the 10 gig plan, the standby mode, the cancellation option sort of all fit into this. So the Rome Unlimited plan is $165 per month. You get unlimited bandwidth. So it's great if you're full time or you just have some kind of use case where you use a ton of bandwidth. I struggled to use it all. Some months I could if I'm out there full time. I often am on the Rome 50 gig plan. It's $50 a month. And then you get 50 gigs and pay a dollar per gig over that. Um, this plan is good for me because even if I go a little bit over, I pay $60, $70, $100. It's still less than $165. So often works out for me. But watch my other video if you want to get into the details. Now, since I did that video, Starlink added the Rome 10 gig plan. So it's $10 a month, 10 gigs a month. It's a little bit more expensive for those additional gigs. And those can add up quickly if you're not watching. So... I was when this came out, I was thinking, what is this good for? And I thought, well, it's like an emergency plan or a backup plan. If I was just texting or emailing, occasionally Googling, like no YouTube, no big videos, no big map downloads and Onyx off road. If it was just more of a backup option or basic communication option, it'd be a good idea. And I almost thought, I wonder if I'd start using this room 10 gig plan 
as opposed to pausing service. Because there's one big problem with pausing service, which is you might not be able to reactivate it if all you have is a Starlink. So if you pause your service or you haven't activated a new Starlink yet, one of the gotchas is that while you can activate Starlink service or resume service with your Starlink using the Starlink app on your phone, if you're not logged into the app or the app wants you to re-authenticate and you have to do two-factor authentication, you have to get a code from a text message or a code from an email, you don't necessarily have the ability to get those codes. While Starlink will let you visit the Starlink website or use the app to activate Starlink, if you're not perfectly logged into your account, it cannot work. And so reactivating your Starlink with only Starlink is sort of like not 100% guaranteed. It's like 60% or 80% guaranteed. There's a chance it's not going to work. And so it's basically 0% because you can't rely on it, right? And so the Rome 10 gig plan got me interested in, well, that could be a really useful option if my Starlink is not activated and I need to reactivate it or there's an emergency, right? So I thought about it and I've actually switched to the 10 gig plan for some months when I would have paused my service. So a couple things have changed now that standby mode is here. And one is that the Rome 10 gig plan no longer exists. So let's get rid of it. So standby mode is essentially a new Starlink plan. It's $5 per month. You get 500 kilobits per second. So if anyone used the internet in the late 90s and you had a modem or you had AOL dial up, it's similar to that. You're still gonna be able to do things like text or load a web page with a few images, check something on a map or do Wi-Fi calling just as you can with the other Starlink plans. But it's just a little bit of throughput, right? And you can use as much of it as you can use. You get actually unlimited data, which is interesting for niche use cases. If you have like a remote weather station, you're checking in on a security uh, you know, device or something remotely. Um, so in some cases it may actually be better, but it is unlimited within that 500 kilobits per second. And as with all Starlink plans, even when you don't have a plan, um, you are gonna get Starlink updates if your Starlink is powered on and has a clear view of the sky. So this is the new standby mode. It's it's almost like an adjustment. It's like Starlink was beta testing with the Starlink 10 gig plan. And I'm sure some people are sad about it, but uh, just like I thought, right, this is probably something they were targeting to try and get people, instead of hitting that pause button, to say, we'll give you a little bit of money, right? And I think it's actually a really good thing, right? If you're in an emergency situation, a recovery situation, you know, someone's injured or you're trying to look up how to fix something on your vehicle, it can be super useful to have standby mode, right? Because you can do that internet search. And if you need more bandwidth, you can activate or upgrade your Starlink plan to Rome 50 gig, right? You don't have to worry about that situation that can occur where you're not logged into the Starlink app and you can't get your two-factor authentication code and you, you're just out of luck, right? So if you think about it, for $60 a year, is it worth it? Like, that's a lot cheaper than a lot of recovery situations or hiking 30 miles to get help or something like that. Um, so I think it's a really interesting option. Um, let's talk about pausing. So now your only option is really to cancel. Uh, so I've added this not activated canceled column. So obviously no cost, you get no data aside from updates. And it does have that con that you might not be able to reactivate service in an emergency or just when you forgot to activate service. If you don't have a cellular connection or another Wi-Fi connection, uh, you may be out of luck. And so um, you could pause your service with a roam plan you know, we actually pay a premium to not have that restriction that residential has around having to qualify in an area to make sure that there's capacity uh, or something like that. And it is possible in the future that Starlink may uh, add some kind of fee if you're just constantly canceling and reactivating your account. Uh, that's currently nowhere to be found. So it seems like you could use this as a pause option. But um, I guess for me, after thinking about it, I'll probably use that standby mode if I was going to pause or do, you know, at the, at the times when I was normally going to pause service, I'm going to try that standby mode because I just think it's a great option for $60 a year or less um, to have that option to always have some level of connectivity and it may really save my butt. And if it saves my butt once or twice, it's well worth it. I want to show you how to figure out which plan you currently have, check out your options, switch to standby mode, cancel, etc. So I'm here on Starlink.com. I'm logged into my account. You could also do this in the Starlink app on your iPhone or your Android device. I am uh, in my Starlink mini, and you can see here my service plan is that Rome 50 gig plan that I said I am often using. 
and you can see standby mode is pending. That's just because I went through this process earlier so I could explain it to you. So if you click on manage, you'll be able to either change your plan or cancel service. And if you select change plan, you'll be able to see your different options. So you can see I'm on the 50 gig plan for the mini. My pending service is standby. It'll change on August 16th. And I could also opt into unlimited or other Starlink plans. I'm gonna cancel. Uh, you could also cancel your service and it would again tell you when your service would end, uh, give you sort of a message that you might not be able to reactivate. Again, since this is a roam plan, there really shouldn't be capacity restrictions unless something changes as it's not a residential plan uh, where you might have to wait to be allowed into a particular ad address or area. Um, and then you'd have to pick a cancellation reason and cancel. I like my service, so I'm going to keep it. Uh, so that is how you do that. Um, some additional things while we're in your account. Uh, I always like to have this additional data turned on if you want to be able to go over that 50 gig cap for a dollar per gig, making sure the switch is turned on to the right will let you do that rather than having your service just stop working at some point when you run out of data. So I think that's good. And uh, I know it's always interesting to see how much data people really use. I was on a trip all of July, and so this is a billing period from the middle of June to the middle of July. You can see I used about 105 gigs here over 15 days, some days uh, five-ish gigs, 10-ish gigs, up to 15 gigs. And so it really depended on if uh, I and Val were working or just not doing as much with real-time video calls and stuff like that. So uh, working days are probably the higher bars and other days are probably a little lower. And then the second half of that trip, again, we used 80 gigs. So in both cases, it made sense to be on the 50 gig plan. Uh, we did have to pay more than $50. In this case, we paid $105, but still less than the unlimited plan. At least for us, usage is definitely going to vary. So you're just going to have to monitor your own usage and see maybe you use a lot less than I do, maybe you use a lot more. Also, check out our updated Starlink field guide. It has a new expanded section about pausing service, going into even more detail than I shared in the video, as well as sections showing average usage for different activity types how much data you might need for different periods of time when you're out there in the field, and suggestions for using it at camp and for using it in motion. If you'd like to download the guide, you can go to shop.banthaoverland.com or use the link below. And again, just scroll down past some of the gear that we make, and you can download the Starlink field guide from this blue banner. All right, I hope that was helpful in helping you understand standby mode and whether or not it's right for you and what choice you want to make to make sure your Starlink service stays active. If you found that helpful, hit the thumbs up button so folks like you can find helpful content like this. And if you'd like to follow along on our adventures as we mix work and play, traveling with our Starlink and making our own DIY gear, hit that subscribe button. I hope to see you out there on the trail. Until then, I'm Adam from Bantha Overland.